Hello and welcome to The Way Show. My name is Wally and it's nice to be with you again on another Sunday. And uh, how was your week, everyone watching us today? I hope it's been good. Uh, it's been eventful like my has been so far. Uh, well, uh, like I said, it's The Way Show. It's another Sunday and uh, this is what we do every Sunday, 8 p.m. UK time. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that, and it's 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 the way show. So it's it's a live program, and today we've got um, a guest, special guest for all the way from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, she's uh, a basketball basketball coach, and also a FIBA certified referee. Uh, she's a female. She's um, she's been a referee in both women and men's basketball competition. She's also a technical director the technical director uh, of the Johannesburg uh, School Board League. So uh, she's, she's, she's a lady of many, um, many talents. So apart from being a basketball coach, she's also a referee and also a technical director. So uh, today we're going to be talking about um, basketball as far as the Southern African uh, um, area is concerned. So uh, we're shifting a bit out of West Africa for this week. Are going to Southern Africa. So a way show is just all about, like I always say, promoting um, every person out there doing well, not just for Nigeria, uh, but the whole of Africa, wherever you are, as long as you're doing well, we are interested in talking to you on the way show. So the person I'm going to be talking to today, um, her name is Vicencia Dianda. So she's going to be joining us soon on the show. Uh, but right before she joins us on the show, um, um, about I think about was it yesterday? We we all had a very rude shock about um, a certain individual that passed away, uh, unfortunately due to colon cancer. I'm uh, talking about no other than uh, the king himself. Uh, everyone calls him the king. Everyone calls him King T'Challa. So um, obviously uh, you know about uh, the, the passing away of the talented young uh, Chadwick Boseman uh, who died at the age of 43. Um, so sad to hear about the news. Uh, you might wonder why we're saying this today. Um, it's just that to let you know, uh, we, I think it, we, as, as, a, as a black person, we all have this connection to this guy. You know, this guy has been able to come out to showcase the best of blackness, you know, um, especially with his performance as a Black Panther in the film of, of the same title. So it's, it's it's so sad to lose that person. I mean, suffering from colon cancer for the past four years, and he ended up doing all these shows, all these movies, you know, uh, trying to satisfy his fans, you know, putting the fans first. It's, uh, it's, it's a shock and it's indeed uh, something to be thankful for. I um, mean, he is not just the Black, Black Panther, he's um, everyone's hero out there. Even whilst he was sick, um, getting treatment for his colon cancer, he still went about going to children who've got, who had cancer, trying to cheer them up, obviously, uh, telling them that, you know, you can, you can beat this, you can win this, this war against cancer. So um, to the family, that he's left behind, to his fans that he's left behind. Uh, we can only wish everyone the very best. And we do hope that King Charles himself, we have a peaceful journey to the land of his ancestors, just like he said in uh, the first part of the Black Panther that we, I guess we all saw. Um, to you, King, rest in power. So that was just our short tribute um, to uh, Chadwick Boseman that died uh, at the age of 43. And obviously to all those departed, um, not, not, just, not just him, uh, there was a, also a very sad occurrence, um, um, which has become a, a, a regular, you know, a, in, in parts of Nigeria and Africa. Um, so to those people, we say, may they rest in peace too. 
So um, yeah, uh, back to the issue of the day at this at this very moment. Um, we've got um, the lady we said we were going to talk to today about basketball all the way from Johannesburg. Hello, uh, Miss Vicentia. I hope I got your name. I pronounced your name um, exactly as it should be, Vicentia, right? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Vicentia? Hello, can you hear me? I think we've got problems with the audios at the moment. So uh, we'll just try as much as possible to reconnect with uh, with our, um, our guest today. Uh, like I said, she's all the way in Johannesburg and we are today broadcasting live from a very new city in the in the UK, a city called Milton Keynes. Uh, that's where we're broadcasting live from today. And my colleague in the studio, uh, Yomi Omogbija, is also handling technical issues with regards to bringing the show to you today, uh, making sure it is well and that it goes well. So uh, Yomi is doing all he can to reestablish contact with Johannesburg, South Africa today. Mm -hmm. So um, as soon as that is done, uh, we will continue uh, the show um, and obviously the chat with uh, Vicenza, uh, who is the FIBA uh, accredited referee and coach and also the technical director of uh, the schools, Johannesburg Schools Board League. Um, well, uh, aside, aside um, starting on a sad note um, about, about um, the, the Black Panther, other stuff has been happening uh, in the world of sports, especially. Uh, we had um, a, a, a story, a news that actually sent uh, shivers down the spine of every person in the world of football when uh, Lionel Messi said, I've had enough of Barcelona, I want to leave. You know, and quite a lot of people, especially Barcelona fans, have been like running from pillar to post thinking, what's going to happen now? Is the world, is the world actually ending? Uh, because Lionel Messi is leaving our beloved uh, club and city. So, um, well, as it is, um, the news coming out is that um, the favourites to sign Lionel Messi are the team from um, the big uh, United Kingdom, England uh, city, that's Man Manchester City. And obviously because of the ties to uh, Pep Guardiola, uh, people are saying that's going to be his next point of call. Can Lionel Messi actually handled the uh, Premiership, uh, the Premier League, as it is. Um, can he, um, you know, face the cold winter nights in Stoke? Unfortunately, Stoke are no longer in the Premier League. But who knows, maybe in, in the Carabao Cup or probably the FA Cup, can he be able to, you know, weather the storm when you go to play in a place like I don't know, Stockport, or uh, probably a, against some very hard tackling team out there in the Premier League or in the English League generally. That remains to be seen. But again, some other people, some other pundits are saying, you know what, we don't think he's going to leave. I mean, there's going to be a round table conference or meeting, probably virtual meeting. And at the end of the day, uh, Lionel Messi, we obviously... Um, uh, take back his works and say, you know what, um, I don't think I'm going to leave again, but uh, before I recommit my future to you guys, you know, such and such will have to be done. Chief of, um, on, the on, on, on the list, I guess, would be probably the dissolution of the Barcelona board, um, which is, uh, I'm actually looking forward to uh, this issue. And I, I, I do hope, I do hope, honestly, because I, I kind of like the English Premier League. I support a team in the English Premier League. I would love to see Messi actually come to the Premier League and to see and prove to some doubters that he is indeed uh, the best player on planet Earth at the moment. Because if you look at it, um, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has done it here in England. He has done it in Spain. He has done it in Portugal in the past. And obviously he's doing it now in Italy, in Syria. Uh, so um, uh, 
some some school of thoughts actually actually say um Messi's always always been in the Spanish league in a comfort zone where he is you know accustomed to all those brilliant players all those brilliant managers he had in uh, Barcelona so um because he had not moved out of Barcelona out of Spain uh, he might not be as um as um you know uh, good or as great as he say he claims to be but it remains to be seen uh we we, we are watching closely um we do hope uh that uh, this issue will be you know resolved amicably there would not be a situation where but um, Messi leaves Barcelona because at the end of the day, what is Barcelona without Messi? You know, Messi is Barcelona, Barcelona is Messi. So we, we just hope and we will obviously uh, be on the lookout to see how that pans out. Um, on the uh, other, other stories coming out, uh, especially in the English Premier League, uh, Chelsea. Chelsea Football Club, they're just signing people left, right and centre. You know, you're beginning to wonder, um, are they are they trying to assemble uh, an all-star 11? I mean, they are recently signed that Thiago Silva, who left uh, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, PSG, to come and join Chelsea on the free. Malang Sarr, also on the free, right from Nice, has come to join Chelsea, although they said he's going to move on loan to a uh, yet-to-be-disclosed club. Uh, Kai Avex is still uh, on the way from Bayern Leverkusen. Um, every, some people say the deal might be close to about £100 million. Pounds. That's a lot of money for about a 21-year-old guy that's, that's only proven himself in the Bundesliga. So uh, that remains to be, you know, that's uh, how that goes. It's 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 going to be a big story on its own itself. I mean, people have spoken so much about Kai that he is a talented footballer, but we don't know. I mean, the English Football League, and uh, especially the Premier League, is a it's totally uh, different ball game itself. So we just hope and pray, you know, that all this comes to pass. So um, whilst I, I am I am trying to talk about football, I think we've established contact with Vicentia. Hello, uh, can you hear us now? Hi Vicentia, can you hear us? Vicentia, can you hear us? I think we still got problems connecting with, uh, with our... Uh, can you hear us now? Oh. I think also she's uh, a bit frustrated there because uh, she's not being able to connect to us. Um, I think there's probably something wrong with the audio. So we will try as much as possible to reconnect and uh, obviously speak to her, um, to talk about basketball, uh, male and female basketball, to talk about the African continent. And why is it so that, um, you know, um, we've got black people doing well in basketball in the United States where obviously they've got the NBA and uh, we don't seem to have that, the, the, that you know, uh, those talents actually doing really well in Africa or probably when, uh, you know, Africa um, as individuals now, as countries go outside to play, you know, we don't seem to excel. Is this something we're doing wrong? Has it got to do with the coaching? Because we know the talent is there. Has it got to do with coaching? Has it got to do with um, um, probably the organization itself? You know, we've heard so much about football. We had, we've, on this program, we've heard about football, we've heard about athletics, we've heard about taekwondo, you know, we've heard about curling. And um, so we were thinking, all right, if we are on the way to building foundations for all these sports, What's going on with basketball? The NBA is exploding. And we've got a lot of black people there that are actually actively involved in basketball and obviously doing well. And don't forget, basketball is a big money spinner uh, in the NBA. So what's going on with basketball in Africa? Why are we not excelling as a continent when we go individually to the Olympics, to the Commonwealth Games and to everything? So, Vicentia, can you hear us? Ah, I can hear. 
I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, I can hear you. Finally. Yeah, finally, we've uh, established contact with you. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Not too bad at all. Yeah, yeah, all good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us uh, all the way from, um, you know, the southern part of Africa. It's so nice to uh, talk to you someone from that part and obviously we talk about something totally different from what we are uh, very much used to on the way show so today we're talking about basketball essentia. so um before we go further can i just ask for you uh to um kind of tell us a little bit about us, about yourself especially to people watching at this moment <laughs> who is who is this lady uh smiling laughing out now to <laughs> us uh, thank you for having me on the show. Um, this lady is um, it's just a simple person who's passion driven, um, who loves basketball, obviously, but not only basketball. I love um, different types of sports. Um, yeah, basically, this is just me. Nothing much. Uh, not nothing much. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be taking you on on, <laughs> on some issues about basketball uh, uh, in a bit. So um, let us start with at the moment you are a, a FIBA uh, certified referee, and you're also a basketball coach and also a technical director. I mean, so you are like a lady who's got quite a lot of uh, hats on. So how do you manage to cope with all this um, all these roles? You know. Um, it's a matter of 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 uh, principle. A matter of planning your things. Um, um, how I manage all these things is um, during the week I'm coaching, I'm doing all sorts of stuff, and then during the weekends, basically that's when I focus mainly on my um, on my refereeing, and then the technical part it just happens here and there. So. I could say I'm able to juggle everything. Honestly, I'm just like able to like work under a lot of pressure. That's just kind of me. I'm a multitasker. So it's really quite easy. You know how it is when you're doing something that you're like really passionate about? It doesn't yeah. just come like it's work. It's it's mm. more or less like something that you're used to doing like every day of your life. So it just True. becomes a part of you and you can just easily like uh, plan your things and do your things without that much pressure. That's true. And don't forget, you uh, um, uh, women, women, as they say, they are very good at multitasking. And, uh, you know, they can do everything just much, much better than we men. And I admit that. And I must say, I'm, I'm terrible at multitasking, you know. And you can always, you can always <laughs> know when I try to do, when I try to do that. <laughs> so tell us about basketball in, in South Africa, especially basketball in, in schools. Because you are uh, you are very much into schools basketball, so tell us about it. Uh, is it growing? Is it at a level where we can say it's uh, more like a pace setting, setting um, 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 role for all Africans to look to and probably copy from? Um. As far as basketball is concerned in the in the schools, there's a lot of talent. Uh, but then we're lacking on the exposure part. Cause we're not really like uh showing off the much of talent that we have, you know. So uh I feel like um talent is there, but the exposure is not enough. Cause I'll mm -hmm. tell you, if I look at like uh basketball in South Africa from say ages 19 and below well i'll tell you they can make up to 10 teams but then there is no exposure and the other thing that's killing the sport is that we're not being able to get along as people in in sports people in basketball to say okay what is it that we need to do so that we can like give a future to these kids because mm. I'll tell you this, there's kids that can actually make it to like uh, college basketball in the States. They can make it when they grow up. They can even make it to the NBA, to the WNBA. But because 
we fighting amongst ourselves. We forget that basketball or sports in general is not about us. It's not about the coaches. It's not about the referees. But it's about everybody involved. And most importantly, it's about the kids. We need to showcase the talent. We need to put our differences aside and say, you know what? We get talent. What do we do? It's high time we showcase our talent as Africa to say, okay, we Africa. What are we doing about it? Let's showcase. Let's show the states that we can also do it down this side. Let's show everybody mm -hmm. that we can make it. Exposure, exposure, exposure is needed and proper running of things. If we could have people up there in the executive committees running things and saying, okay, let's push these things. Let's do this for this thing to happen. And then I'm telling you, you will see basketball South Africa going far. Like you will see a lot of that. We have a lot of talent down the side. Would you would you think it's it's just because um, and, and I always ask my guests this uh, because football is kind of like more superior. Permit me to use that word. Football is everyone in Africa loves football. There's no country in Africa that you don't go that you won't see uh, on on an afternoon Saturday Sunday afternoon. Children just kicking what even oranges on the streets, you know, in the name of football. Um, and football in South Africa is more like a model for the rest of Africa. I mean, uh, the Premier Soccer League in 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 South Africa is, is big, it's super sports, and so, you know all of that. So, would you say it's an issue of people don't really care about the sports? It's just football. Every other sports, yeah, get behind me. Mm, I wouldn't say it's that as per se, but I'd like to think. Um, for football to be like considered, it's because they've showcased themselves. They've come and say, "Okay, we're here. We're playing football. We can play this." And then they do their things according to the book. The one thing that kills other sports, as as, as good as they can be, as good as they could be, there is no proper running of things. Do you understand? Fine, mm -hmm. yes, everybody globally loves football. Everybody wants to go watch football. It's a Saturday. It's a Sunday. We want to go watch Manchester United playing against Liverpool, blah, 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 and all that stuff. But then what are we as the basketball community doing to say, okay, we want to get to where soccer is. We want to get mm -hmm. that far. We're not doing anything. So at the end of the day, as much as we could get 100 sponsors, as long as we're not showing that we want this thing, we want to go this far, we'll never get there. Mm. We'll never get there. Again, could it, could it also be, um, and I totally understand what you've, you've said, could it also be a, a cultural thing? Okay. So and in Africa, we, we, we tend to not be so much organized. I mean, uh, basketball in America is, is, We've got quite a lot of basketball courts, probably in estates, in projects, where have you. I see people playing and they got a, a, a path. You can go to the college, play basketball. From there, you get drafted into the NBA or WNBA. And you go and then you make yourself, you know. And again, NBA has tried as much as possible to develop a workshop to tap in talent from Africa. And we've seen some of these African talents, you know, getting shipped away, you know, to play NBA, to play NBA, sorry, to play basketball in the college, you know, all the colleges, and then from there get drafted. Would you say, um, we've, we, we, apart from the organization um, aspect that we are not really in tune with, would you also say it's just our culture? We, we seem to just... <laughs> Just take things the way they are, you know, just don't worry about it. I think it's going to get better and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. To a certain extent, though, I feel like culture does, like, affect, but to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Not really like that much because I feel like we're now living in a world whereby we, we understand culture. But then how about we form new cultures? How's that? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? 
yeah so i think culture to a certain extent does affect but then it's also how can i put it it's also it also comes back to do we really want to do it or not mm-hmm. you know yeah okay. i've seen i've seen some pictures of you as as a female basketball coach uh refereeing male you know basketballers and people obviously taller than you and sometimes you know <laughs> bigger than you and you you're telling them you know stop that's a foul that's a foul that's a technical foul against you don't don't you sometimes feel intimidated when you play when you referee when you officiate against these giants hello vinci I think we probably lost that current connection again. Uh, we will try as much as possible to get, get back to uh, Vinci uh, Vicentia to continue our talk about basketball and uh, women's sports. So, um, well, um, if you still watching, um, we saw some few uh, pictures there um, of uh, Vicentia with um, some female basketballers and obviously male basketballers. Uh, obviously, like, like I said, she's a coach. Uh, she tries to bring our technical know-how to helping these young boys and girls uh, get off the streets, get off the life of crime, uh, you know, get off violence and come into a basketball um, court to showcase the talent. You, you never know. I mean, everyone's got a story. Um, LeBron James, um, the late Kobe Bryant, everyone had a story, everyone had a beginning, you know, everyone started from somewhere. Uh, these people you're seeing on the screen and these pictures are starting from somewhere uh, on, on the streets of Soweto, on the streets of, of Joburg, on the streets of Lagos, on the streets of, you know, Kampala, wherever, wherever in Africa, uh, you know, and um, they're trying to do something good for themselves, not just for themselves, for the community. And if there's anything I like about I like about most of all these African born basketballers that play in the in the uh, NBA and obviously w, WNBA, is that zeal and that commitment to wanting to come back to Africa to say thank you to where they, they've come from, you know, to give back. I mean we saw uh Akim Olajuwon back in the days when he was still at Houston Rockets. Um, um, coming back, you know, um, to give back to Nigeria. We've seen um, um, Ol- Olamide Oyediji, you know, when he was in the, uh, in the NBA, also doing that. We've seen Masai Ojiri, who is who has actually gone from from the lowest of the low right up to the top now in NBA. He is actually president of uh, um, NBA team, you know, the Toronto Raptors won the NBA last season and Masai was actually in the forefront of making that possible. He started, you know, right on the streets in Kaduna, right there. He's not at the top, at the top of it all. So I was just saying, uh, VC, sorry, uh, we had that call before we had that call uh, in transmission. I was just saying, I saw some pictures of you as a referee um, um, officiating basketball, bas- basketball games where you are, you know, probably uh, uh, screaming, barking instructions at people uh, taller than you, bigger than you, uh, especially men. Uh, do you feel intimidated sometimes when you know, giving a technical foul and people, you know, coming to you? Because I, we watch, we watch a lot, a lot of that in, in the NBA when when players come to you and probably want to trash talk to your face. And how do you feel? Do you do you get that a lot? And how do you feel at that point? You don't feel intimidated. Uh, uh, uh get a, a lot uh, um i used to feel intimidated my first years of refereeing i you know i'll be like oh my goodness that giant is gonna like uh, you know do something to me and then <laughs> and the more games that you do the more games that you do and then you get used to the pressure you get used to dealing with the uh, players emotions with the other coaches shouting at you and all that mm-hmm. so I'm really used to it. I'm not really scared because at the end of the day, we're all there for the game. So play your game. 
I'm really, <laughs> really used to it. So what was it, as a referee, I want to ask you, what's been the highlights of your officiating career? I mean, have you been to any World Cup, uh, African Cup, or what have you? What's been the highlights at the moment? Um, that's what I'm hoping for in the future. Um, mm -hmm. So far, I've only done games down here in Africa. I haven't gone as far as FIBA World. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping... Uh, next year, I'm just hoping next year when like we renew our licenses, then at least I'll go far. Because I'm hoping that yes. just one day I can actually make it to the Olympics. I definitely will be keeping an eye on on you uh, when when we see you probably at the Olympics, refereeing who knows USA uh, v Greece oh or Serbia. Yeah. <laughs> I will be will be shouting. Yeah, she was she was on our show. That lady, she was on our show. She was on our show. Make sure you give a shout out when you when you when you get interviewed by I don't know CNN, uh, BBC, ESPN, TNT. <laughs> Just give a shout out to the way show, okay? <laughs> so definitely, um, definitely. Thank you, thank you. So um, let's let's now go into um, um, female basketball. Um, again in Africa, um, we 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 seem to have, um, and this is probably a norm in every part of Africa. The female sport is uh, sorry, the female sport is always like playing second fiddle to the male, and sometimes the female actually do get more glory, bring more glory to Africa than the male, but governments organizations, private organizations seem to always want to invest more in the male than female. Um, is that something you probably think has happened? You know, do you think this is really, it's also happening to basketball, especially in Southern Africa? Yes, definitely. It is happening. It is happening because there isn't much, um, there isn't much markets there isn't much advertising for the for the female teams. It's always uh, the men's teams, the men's teams, the men play better and all that. Even if you look at it, look at the like, there's more NBA than WNBA. So we're suffering the same thing down here in Africa because it's, it's more like we believe or they believe men play better but at the end of the day we play in the same spot and if i tell you that women now play even much better than men you think i'm joking but it's thing that is happening right now you go to senegal senegal is one country that i've seen that they're really trying to push and support uh for the for for their women's basketball i remember afro basketball senegal was playing another team, I've forgotten the name, the stadium was packed. Well, it was packed. And there I am, I'm watching that game and I'm, I'm thinking, why can't we have this the whole of Africa? Why can't we have everybody supporting a women's game, be it soccer, be it basketball, be it cricket, be it rugby? Why are we not giving that much support to the women? Why are we not supporting the girl child that much? We need that. We really need that. And I feel that's something that I'll go tooth and nail fighting for till we get that much coverage for the girl child, for the women in sports, because we're not getting it. We're not. Um, you know, um, I've had um, a few people also come on this program, especially women that's spoken about, uh, passionately about the girl child, the girl child, the girl child. Is it, is it, do you need to fight uh, to get your voices heard? Or do you need to be, you know, given a chance by the men folk to say, all right, you know what? Yeah, fine, I'll just go there and take it. What would, what would you feel would be the right thing? Should we give you the chance or should you fight for it? Or should, do you have to prove to us that you are as good as, you know, as the men folk to be given the chance to, all right, do your thing? We don't need to fight. We just need to get the chance. 
Give us the chance to showcase ourselves. Give us the chance to show you that we also, as as women, we can do it. It's not about fighting or anything, but I feel it's about coming together. Imagine a scenario where you would have, um, take it for instance, where you would have all the NBA teams going to watch WNBA. So imagine in Africa where we'll say, okay, soccer season is over, it's basketball season now, and it's the women's teams that are playing. How about we go and we support? We need the support. We need to to like be given the opportunity to say, okay, there is a platform. Show us what you can do, and we can do it, and we'll prove you. We'll prove it to the world that as women, we can also do it, you know? Mm. That's 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 a good one. That's a good. One. And hopefully, uh, people are listening because uh, um, um, people people uh, in, in the places are obviously listening. And I think also maybe one of the other reasons is because women don't have the right representation at the board level. You know, in all not just sports, everything generally. You know, be it economy, uh, um, industry. Uh, sports, um, movies, music. Would you also say that's that's what's happening also in in Southern Africa? Yes, definitely. 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 The the the, the, so, the presentation is not there. Like you have people who are up there. You know, um, you have most of this uh executives be it sports be it corporate world you have uh male men taking most of the of the of the posts that are there so i think it comes to a point whereby we're saying okay at least for 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 somebody to like really stand up for us it has to be that someone who understands where we're coming from and mm where are we aiming at getting to, you know? Because at the end of the day, I don't see how, how, like, um, I'll give you a very good example. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in the days when I started refereeing, I was told, no, you can't do these. This is a man's job here. Teams will, like, beat you up when you make a bad call. You know, I was given all sorts of, like, things. I was told all sorts of things, like, no, you can't do it. And then I'm like, no, I can do it. And then I, I said, okay. I'll let my game speak for itself. Let me show you what, what I can do. And I did it, Wole. I did it. I got my international license. But then at the end of the day, I'm thinking, okay, here I am. I got my international license. What about the other women? And mm -hmm. I told myself, okay, I'm going to stand up for the other women. So ever since I've been trying to get as many women as I can to say, okay, look, guys, we can do it. When I got my license, well, we had 17 female referees who had international license for basketball here in Africa. Africa, 17. Wow. Ask me just how many 17. men. Just 17. And ask me how what many men we had. Yeah, how many men? I think about something or something. Somewhere there, yeah, 50 plus. I know it's, it's more than 100. And we have only wow. 17 female referees. And this is what I'm talking about. And I'm saying, and I'm really glad that now FIBA has said 2021 season, they're looking for more female refs. And I'm really happy that they've realized that we need more girl power because mm. we can also do it. That's that's very interesting. I mean, in the whole of Africa, we've only got 17 FIBA accredited female referees. Yeah, that, that is, was um that was twenty eighteen. Yeah, twenty eighteen. So since then I think so now they're really trying to have more female refs come aboard. We need more female refs, we need more female coaches, more female technical supervisors. Like we need more girl power in there. It's so boring that you go to a competition, right? It's a FIBA tournament, it's a girls tournament or a women's tournament and then you have eight male referees and then you have three <laughs> female referees it doesn't work 
Mm. I mean, like it's a it's it's a women's tournament. So how about we have more percentage being female referees and then a lower percentage being what men referees? I feel like if we're given an opportunity, we'll go far. That's all we're asking as women in sports. <laughs> all right, we're passionately listening to you, and obviously we would. Uh, I hope I hope every every other person is also listening in our own. Um, uh, in our own little way, I mean, it might not be up to the level of FIBA, but in our own little way, we obviously should, especially to my main folk watching today, uh, as much as you can, give the girl a child, give the woman a chance. You know, that's just what we want, just a chance. Um, Vinci, I want to ask you this. Um, do you, how, how easy is it for a, a woman to be a FIFA, uh, sorry, F uh, no, I'm saying FIFA, sorry, FIBA accredited referee? FIBA. What do, what what do you need to do for uh, a woman to be a FIBA um, um, accredited referee? <laughs> you simply need to be like practicing refereeing in your national federation, and mm. um, yes, and make sure that you attend uh, all workshops that they carry out, and then the national federation will then uh, nominate your name to FIBA to say, okay, this person has been practicing with us and we're, we're very sure that they're eligible to get an international license. And then FIBA then um, does their exams and then we also do fitness tests. So it's a matter of staying in shape you have to be working out, making sure you're fit because we do a fitness test. And then you always have to like be reading the rules, always be up ahead with the rules so mm. that you don't fight with the coaches and players. Because, hey, she still made a you, hey? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, I, I remember um, whilst I was researching um, to do this show today to um, of course, I knew I was going to be speaking with you, and I was talking to someone uh, who, well, unfortunately, is a, is, is a man. Said to me, uh, when we were talking about female referees in football, in basketball, and other sport, and uh, he, he did mention, sadly, uh, I need to say this, that it could be why we are not giving why people are not giving the women the chances. It could be that because of the issue of, all right, a woman has, well, we, we get married, we get pregnant, we have babies, we take time off. So we need people that will be there all the time and blah, blah, blah. Did you did you find that um, those kind of words spoken to you when you were starting? You know, I know it's, it's, it's a bit like a, a, a slap on the face, but sometimes people and someone did say this and i'm like oops no you know men um, men I men really, take paternity really leave never... that now yeah go on go on be safe Okay, so like I really, I really never had that, but I've seen some, some, some colleagues who've gone uh, through that. I feel like um, if a man can go to work and then get his leave days, why can't it be the same with women? Why is it that uh, we get all this thing of, um, okay. I'll say I'm pregnant today and then I'm only going to be able to get back maybe say like after I've given birth and stuff like that. And then the next thing, when you go back, it's like, nah, we got somebody else and this, this and that, that. But then why aren't you saying, okay, because what I noticed is we tend to lose a lot of good people. Because we're saying women, once they give birth, they you know they become weak and all that. But we put in the work as much as men do. We mm -hmm. also like talking on refereeing and and coaching. We also like waking up in the morning. We 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 keeping fit. We going to the gym. So don't come to me and tell me no because you're going to get pregnant and stuff like that. I'll get pregnant, I'll give birth, I'll be back to my normal self. I'll still work hard, as hard as the what? As the male. So there's mm. no, I feel like it's so unfair. 
it's mm. so unfair because we lose we've lost a lot of good referees female referees because they got married they gave birth but because you know things happen and <laughs> yeah. they happen but i feel like it's, it's very unfair it is very unfair I totally, I totally agree with you too. I think it's unfair. Before we carry on, um, I feel, I'm just going to write, I'm um, sorry, read some uh, comments uh, to you. Uh, you seem to have, uh, we've got uh, the Women's Solidarity Today Union. Um, um, everyone's saying, yeah, go on, go on, girl. So um, I'll, I'll just read through some of them. Um, uh, Kuda, Kuda said, um, thank you for the show. And she's saying hello from us, Johannesburg, South Africa. Hello, um, Johannesburg, Joburg today. And I hope um, um, every, everything is going on well there. Uh, Fifi uh, uh, says hello, The Way Show. Happy Sunday. Thank you, Fifi. Happy Sunday to you. Sandra Sylvester, um, the uh, ever-reliable, always with us. Hello. Nice to see you, everyone, on the beautiful show. Um, and Sandra, Sandra also calling you, um, Vinci, a superwoman. Uh, Kno says the way show and clapping for us. Um, Kuda has also called you uh, powerful Vinci Dianda. Hmm. Um, um, I I Idioma, thank you. Well done, Vinci. Uh, she says um, Estelle Masia said proud of you, Vinci. Nice one. Um, Kuda is also saying yeah, we can't wait for you to be at the Olympics. Uh, Ijoma saying, well done. Grace Brown John saying, saying, saying to you, Vinci, stay positive no matter what. And um, Estelle also saying, yes, as women, we can do it, V. So you seem to have all the women union behind you today, uh, Vinci. <laughs> and and on, on, behalf, on behalf of the men folk and the men, men's association, and I say to you to uh, keep at it. And, uh, well, we can't wait to see you at the world stage, uh, the Olympics, uh, whatever, you know. So um, um, you, you're you also a coach, you know. Um, how has it been with you coaching people? I mean, um, it's, it's, not, it's never easy getting people from uh, different walks of life, especially youths, you know, kids, uh, 12 to, to 18 and coaching them. Um, um, has it been with you coaching these kids? Um, what do you have to say to them, you know, for you, for them to make them come to your level and reason as an adult? Okay, so, so far it's, um, it's had its challenges, but um, as you go, you, you get used to it. So, um, when I'm on the court and I'm coaching, so for us to really understand each other with the youth, what I usually do is I level down. So I bring myself to their level first, understand how they think, how they do things. Because the youth nowadays, is, as we like to call them, like um, <laughs> down here in South Africa, I'm a 2000. You know, they have their own way of <laughs> thinking. They have, they have their own way of doing things. So first things first is me lowering myself to say, okay, so what are we doing? Oh, okay, we're dancing. Okay, let's dance. Okay. But then they know that um, when it's time to have fun, we have fun. But then when it's time to work, it's just a matter of getting through to them up here, making them mm. see that when it's time to work, it's time to work. There's always going to be time for play. So we can't mm. mix the two. All right. So that's how I get by every day with uh, coaching the youth. As long as you bring yourself, you level down with them and then they understand you and then you're good because... I remember at one time I was them some years back. So True. to a certain extent, I actually understand how they think. So, mm. and I don't have that thing of saying, okay, I'm coach. So you do as I say, if I say run, you run. Obviously mm. they know my kids. Some of them, they are watching. I'm pretty sure. When it's time to run, you <laughs> run. It's my court. It's my house. But then I don't want them to be scared of me. I want mm. them to know that, they are safe with me. They can trust me. But then trust is earned. 
So I trust them. And then them, they can easily trust me. So when there's like that level of trust between us, we can easily work together because I like creating an environment whereby all the kids feel at home. We family, you know, we mm -hmm. family on and off the court. Because my rule is if you're failing in class, you don't come to my court. You have mm -hmm. to be passing in class for you to come to my court. So that I've induced a thing of saying, okay, if your teammate is failing, that means all of us are failing. So you have mm. to be able to help each other. So through that, I've been able to, to get through to the youth to say, okay, you can be the best basketball player, you can be the best cricket player, but as long as you don't have an education, then you're not going anywhere. So that has made it easy for me in the past years that I've been coaching and it's been... It's been working great, actually. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, can I just say a big apology to Kuda uh, watching? Um, Kuda is actually male, not female. My, my bad, Kuda. So um, apologies for that. That's, Kuda has got a question. He said, what has been the biggest challenge you've encountered as a female ref coach? And what's your advice to other female coaches aspiring uh, to become FIBA refs? So that's a question from the, uh, from Kuda. Okay, so my biggest challenge that I've encountered as um, as a ref was at one game um, here in South Africa. I got shouted at for making a good call, but then wow. I guess maybe the coach wasn't like the coach really didn't understand the rule or something. Well, I got called all sorts of names. I was told, you Ooh. can't come and tell me what to do in my country. You're xenophobic. Who do you think you are? You think you're the queen of basketball and stuff like that. Like, it was, you know, it was, like, intense for me. And, um, yeah, um, that's been my, like, biggest challenge, getting used to, like, trying to blend in with um, a whole new set of people that really don't know you. Mm. But um, so far, so good. I've been able to work with some people. And then my biggest challenge as a coach was when one coach, Mel Coach, walked up to me and told me that he would never lose to a female coach. Wow. Yeah. And then mm. I beat that coach. <laughs> and oh, I that's won good. The well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. That's good. Thank that's that's you. like so... that's like saying yeah that's like saying up yours and it was good that's good that's 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 probably the biggest um um uh, um answer you could give to that coach is good and please go go <laughs> right ahead and make sure you be quite a lot of them yeah <laughs> and once you do that just put in a diary another one's falling back the dust yeah all right exactly. <laughs> okay. yeah 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 so my advice okay. to um to women that want to become uh FIBA coaches or referees is you can do it no matter what. Mm. Just when somebody comes up to you, tells you you can't do it, just look at them in the face and say, I can do it. doesn't matter you're a woman. You can do it. We can do it as much as they can do it. So just mm. don't give up. Just when you put your mind up to something, just do it. And you never know where you might wake up. I tell you, that's that's very inspirational to every woman working uh, watching out there, and uh, actually to every girl watching out there. Uh, you know, don't know what you're going through at this moment. Uh, you've heard it all from Vinci. Um, it's it's not it's not e it's not easy, you know. But uh, when you see people like her that excel in a chosen field, despite all the ups and downs, despite all the knocks and all the nasty words thrown towards her. You know, uh, she, or she, all you can do is just brush it down, you know, taking your strides and go for it again. All right, go for it. I mean, this past few weeks, months, we've been bringing in women talking about, you know, uh, the girl child talking about um, knowing what you want, focusing on what you want, and getting right there. You know, you can stand in your feet. Uh, you, 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 you can't say, oh, I can't do it because I'm, I'm a girl. No, you can't do it because 
as a girl, at the end of the day, you are mothers. You know, like once somebody said, if 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 you educate a, a, a boy, you're probably educating a family. But if you educate a woman, you're educating the whole nation. You know, and so that's that's the words. Those are the words from um, a sage. You know, and you've also heard it all from Vinci today. So thank you so much, Vinci, for coming to the show. And um, uh, we want to wish you all the very best. Uh, like I said, we'll be we'll be looking out for you the day we see you. Maybe at the Olympics, maybe you get probably get drafted to go and officiate some NBA games or WNBA games. No. Yeah, you never know. We'll be we'll be rooting out for you. Just make sure make sure you give shout out to us. Yeah, when you get there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, and good luck with your with your coaching with your girls, with your boys, and with your referee. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank All right. you, so you much for having me on the show. You thank you. You stay safe now. So um, that was okay. Vinci, um, all the way from Joburg, has um, spoken to us today, not just about basketball, but sports in general, not again just about sports, but about the girl, you know, about the women, ch woman, child, about about the girl, child. You know, it's it's so so nice to have you know women come out there mm -hmm. to obviously empower all the other women out there to get at it. You know, you can do it. Okay, so uh, to um, quickly take um, uh, for all the few comments, I've got uh, Dion. Thank you, Dion, for joining us again on this show. Uh, brilliant and informative show. Thank you. Grace Brown Johnson says, quite possible. Yes, Grace, it is possible if you want it. Lennon Dayanda says, go sis. We haven't started yet. Okay, good. Um, it's been a way show today. And thank you to everyone that has commented today from Joburg in South Africa, uh, to London, England, to Wherever you are, you know, thank you for commenting. Please, like I always say, subscribe to our show, like all our videos. Uh, if you're on Instagram, please um, um, like our page. Uh, Kuda says, great show. Thank you, Kuda. I don't know where you are watching the show from. Uh, I think you said you're watching from Joburg. So thank you for uh, watching, um, tuning in from Joburg. Uh, please make sure you tell your friends and, and obviously family and um, tell them about our show. You know, it's we, we try as much as possible to um, um, and bring people for the, all of Africa uh, because you know what? We are one. We are Africans. We are from the same mother Africa, you know, so we are one. We only want the best for ourselves and indeed for our mother Africa. So um, tell tell people about us, okay? And uh, if you are on Instagram, please follow the way show. It's uh, the dot way dot show. Uh, it's on Instagram and obviously on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Notification bell is there. Uh, just click on it. And uh, once we've got new videos uh, loaded, you will be amongst the first to know. I want to thank you all for joining the show today. Thank you, special thank you. Uh, to Vinci, uh, Deanda, all the way from South Africa. Again, very good luck to you, girl. And uh, don't let go. Keep it in. Um, focus in for the stars. So thank you, everyone, for coming in the show. Uh, Ijeoma says, I love the show. More grease to your elbow. Thank you so much, Ijeoma. Esparsa uh, says, hello. Um, oh, hello, Esparsa. And uh, thank you all for coming to the show once again uh, for uh, for your comments. And uh, please do have a very, very great 